Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. Today's video is the introduction to the Dino Mule. So I'm going to talk about what I plan to do on every one of the tests and a couple of the pieces have come in and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with those and uh, kind of describe things to get you some better ideas on what's going to happen. And if there's something you'd like to see tested during it, uh, feel free. So here's the basic rundown. It's going to be a 406 small block Chevy. And the biggest thing that probably makes this test different than some of the other stuff you might see online is I'm going to be doing different stuff with a cylinder head and the intake manifold. So the majority of the testing is going to be these two parts. Um, these are what we tested. Doing different things on those, just one individual step at a time. Things I haven't seen before, and it's going to be really time intensive, but I think it'll be really, really good for what you guys want to see. So, um, the plan is to go like this, because I've put a lot of thought into it. What I'm going to do first, obviously, is get a baseline dyno test, and I'll go through some of the parts with you today. And But before I do that, I am going to measure every single aspect of the engine. And I mean, I'm going to flow each, all, all eight cylinders. I'm going to flow an intake and exhaust. I'm going to CC all the chambers, all the intake ports, all the exhaust ports. I'm going to measure the intake manifold as best I can on all of this stuff as well. I'm going to flow the intake manifold attached to the head as well. It's exactly like it is now. That stuff probably won't be in a video, but I'm going to collect all that data. And after the first year of testing, I plan to make a book. Now, is it because I'm a publisher? No. The biggest reason is if I was to include all that data in the videos, the videos would be insanely long. And most people are like, you sound like a woman when you go talking like that. If you did all that, you blah, 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 get to the point. So most of you just want to see, did the change do anything on as far as horsepower and torque, which I totally understand. So the video part will have some of the information. Obviously, it's going to have what changed in the horsepower and torque and what was done. But the actual measurements and things of that sort will be collected in a book. At the end of the year, I'm going to collate a book and then I'm just going to sell it. Um, I think it's going to be better for some of you because some of you are like, I really want to know all the technical details, every little thing that you've done, and that's going to be that. So the book will have my opinion after each test and what I thought caused it, although you can just ignore that. The majority of the book will be just pictures, data, and that sort of thing. And after each year, there'll be another one, assuming things keep going on. Um, anyway, that's the idea. The biggest reason why I just don't do it as a video, the video would be really, really long. So let's talk about what the engine's actually going to be. It's a 406 small block Chevy. Um, if you watched some of my previous videos, you've seen the block already. It's a Dart SHP Pro Block, um, 4155 bore. It's going to have a SCAT crankshaft, 4340 um, crank. It's going to have the SCAT 4340 I-beam rods with the Area P2000 cap screws, some Race Tech flat top pistons, and it should yield about 11 and a half or so to one compression ratio. I'll know more once we CC these anyway. Um, the camshaft is coming from Urson. It's supposed to be in today, and I'll share that probably in a later video. But it's going to be a 260 degree duration on intake, 270 on exhaust. It's going to have a 680 lift on intake and exhaust with a 1.6 ratio rocker. Um, it's on 108 lobe separation. It's probably the most generic cam I could think of to do. And the reason for that, sorry, the air conditioner kicks on at the worst times. The reason for that is because I wanted something that's kind of like middle of the road and will work. Uh, some of you were like, well, that's way too big for what these heads are. Could be, but the heads aren't going to stay this way. I think if you're doing a race engine, most of you are about this that area. You know, there's several people doing street stuff. If you're doing a race engine, you're about that on duration and about that on lift. The camshaft will not be changed. And I know some of you are like, well, there's no way you can match... Those heads will not work with that camshaft or whatnot. Well, that's not really the point. We could keep changing camshafts and the thing would take forever and it cost me a fortune. We're just finding out little stuff that happens. So the camshaft's really not going to change. Maybe at some point it will, but not for a long, long time. That part's supposed to remain the same. Um, Urson was really nice enough to grind that up for me. I'm going to have some BAM 904 lifters in it. Um, I do like those. I use them those my stuff too. For the induction side, obviously, these are the AFR enforcer heads. If you have Motor Trend on demand, you can watch the latest episode of Engine Masters, and they actually did these. They use these AFR enforcers, a set of Pro Comps, and a set of their Summit heads, and compared them, and the AFR enforcers were the best. I'm going to go ahead and tell you something I didn't tell you in the video. The Pro Comp 
is the same head as this one. The only difference was the valve train. And the valve train can make a huge difference, and that's obviously why it made more power. Also, the casting's cleaner because they were cast in a different spot. Same, same design, though. As far as that summit head, just for you guys that didn't know, that's the IK200 head from Brodix. There you go. Some extra knowledge. But anyway, this is the head that's going to be used. It's a nice, economical head. You might say, why don't you start off with something that's higher end? These are a nice head. And by the way, AFR was nice enough to donate both of these, which is a huge deal to me. Um, but the reason why I was, I was going to buy them regardless, even if they didn't donate, but I was going to buy them regardless just because I didn't want to spend a lot of money on a head. Um, because this head, at some point, is going to be really, really good. But some of the stuff's going to ruin the head. It's going to make it make way less power. And I, to do that on a nice set of heads and ruin them like that, um, I, I just, I can't do it. So these heads are a nice head, but some of the stuff's going to definitely going to make them worse. But we're going to find out if it, how bad it actually makes it and that sort of thing. And I'll get to that in just a minute. But these are the heads. They've got 202 intake valves, 1600 exhaust valves. I'm going to flow them all again. There's a video I've already done of these being flowed. I've done a review on them before. You can look back at that. But I'm going to flow all that. That should be interesting. I'm going to CC everything too so you can see how far off they are and everything as well. Um, I'll get to the changes on the head in just a minute. Let's talk about the intake. I have never used this intake before. And honestly, I just I guess I just didn't pay enough attention. And I probably should have. This intake really looks nice. Um, but there's one thing... It's probably changing the first test I'm going to do is actually going to involve this intake and not the heads. I thought the first test I would like to do is do a baseline, obviously, and just port the exhaust port, not the intake, to see if that actually changed something. That's probably going to be the second test, not the first, because this intake is actually going to end up being the first one. And I'm going to tell you why. This intake looks really, really nice. It is extremely nice. If you had one of the old plastic ones that AFR had, the two-piece deal, this is the cast aluminum version of that. They no longer sell a plastic one. So it looks great. And I think it actually will perform really, really good too. Here's one thing about it. So I look at the areas, they look fine. And yes, eventually this will get ported and done different things to test out different things. But it looks fine, except for if you notice it has a clover leaf. You typically don't see these on a 4150 style manifold. <sighs> I actually like this, and I'm going to try to squeeze in a picture right here from my 2008 Engine Masters. I spent a, almost six months on a manifold putting epoxy in different spots to make it better, and I ended up doing something similar to at least these two, not these ones. Those two got added, and it made a huge difference. The exception and the difference was is this. When you look at this, you're like, this is a, I think it looks great. It takes up dead area having these here with one problem. This works great if the carburetor is bolted directly to it. So if the carburetor is bolted directly to it, my barrels are right over here, this takes up dead space. But what happens when you do this? If you put a spacer on it like that, the carburetor butterflies are here. That air ends up hitting all four corners. That's gonna change the air fuel, it's gonna cause turbulence in the manifold. And I don't think it's, um, great for when you have a spacer on so even like this is a the bottom top part of an anti-reversion place but it's a tapered here even if you did that that taper most of them like even the hvh um, their taper stops here where the flange is so you'd still have it hitting that when i did the one for the engine masters i had the this part right here it went all the way up into the taper for the four hole having it like this i'm not so sure certain of I want to say, and we're going to find out, when I do the baseline test, I'm going to bolt the carburetor directly to this. Then I'm going to start putting on spacers. I'll put on a one inch, and then I don't have one here, but I'm going to. A two inch tapered four hole. Those, the two inch tapered four hole is usually the best one. And I want to see what's going to happen. After that, the very first test I'm going to do is pop this intake off, and I'm going to not port the intake. I'm going to cut out these dividers, this clover leaf, and just smooth it up so it blends in and retest. That's gonna be the first test, just because I wanna see if this makes any difference before I start messing with the heads. Because I think I would rather have a spacer for one on here, because it's gonna keep the carburetor cooler. And as the tests go on, I don't want like the heat 
the residual heat build up in the carburetor to affect the test. So I gotta keep it more consistent. So having it bolted directly to the aluminum is just gonna cause more heat to be in the carb, and I really don't want that. Um, so I wanna run on a spacer, but we're gonna see what difference it does. After that, this is the part of the video that makes the most difference. What are you gonna do? Well, I kinda have a post-it note here, kind of the things I'm gonna do. This is about 12 months of port of dyno stuff. The first one is just porting the exhaust. That's all I'm gonna do. The next thing is I'm gonna large the throat on the exhaust. So as I port this on the first one, I'm gonna leave the exhaust about 86%. The next thing, so test number two, no other port work, I'm just gonna make the throat larger. Now after each one of these tests, of course I'm gonna flow test it, volume, you know, CC it and everything, and keep that for the book. But I can tell you right now, when I open that throat up, I'm gonna lose flow. I'm gonna put it back on the dyno, we'll see how much actual power it makes or loses. That's the next one. After that, we're gonna open up the exhaust exit which I may do this in a different order. And here's what I mean, uh, of course. So when I poured it, I'm gonna open up this exhaust exit a little bit bigger, but not huge. But on test three, you guessed it, I'm gonna make it pretty big. Cause I wanna see how much power you lose or gain when you make that exhaust opening too big. Um, and, and that may be done in two different tests. I may just do the, the roof first and the floor second, because I know dropping the floor is bad, but how bad? Um, so that's gonna be another test. After that, then it's gonna be um, cutting out to a 205, because I don't know how many people have said, don't cut out the valves to a larger valve size, you're gonna kill horsepower unless you're doing work or whatever. I've heard that myth before. We're gonna see if there's any validity to it. So I'm gonna cut it out to a 205 instead of the 202 and see what happens. Uh, then, I'm not gonna, by the way, when I cut the, val cut the valve drop for 205, I'm not gonna do any blending. I'm just gonna cut it. So what's gonna leave is a nasty ridge. It's probably gonna flow less and it may make less power until the next one, I'm gonna blend that chamber. So I'm gonna take that 205 and I'm gonna blend that chamber out. That's all I'm gonna do. I might mill the head back to get the CCs back and then I'm gonna redial it and see what happens. That means fixing, doing a proper valve job. You've already got the valve job in, now you've blended it, let's see what happens. Then we're gonna cut to a 208 because we do a 205, let's try 208. Then finally, I'm gonna port the intake and then I'm gonna do a deep, which I've seen people do several times. I'm gonna sink this valve job in really deep um, just to see what happens. Because some people have done this and it's, it's absurd, but we'll see what happens. The next thing is, this is the bowl right here, which I know I might have light. I'm gonna make it really, really large, larger than I usually do, just to see what that really affects. Like blowing out the bowl usually makes it flow more, but. Um, I don't know that it makes more power. It looks good on the bench. We're gonna find out how much power it loses or gains. Uh, next thing, I'm gonna overly lay back the short side. So when I first port this, this is the short side, which I know there's no light. I am going to do it normal when I first port it, and then I'm gonna really lay it back um, really hard and see what happens with power with just that. Um, then I'm going to, this is gonna be ridiculous, but I see this done quite a bit too. These are the openings on the intake port. Uh, this is the next test. I'm gonna make the port openings gigantic. Uh, probably gonna do like a 1207. When I finish porting on the first round, it's gonna be a 1206. I'm gonna go like a 1207. Um, I've seen several people do that. Don't know if I agree with that. I don't think it's gonna um, do anything as far as airflow, but we'll see what it does on the power because we're gonna have an answer then. And then uh, a couple other tests, not so much even related to port work is this. These heads come with a hydraulic roller valve spring. This is gonna be a solid roller spring on here because I'm gonna run a solid roller. One of the tests I wanted to test was this, and this is what's gonna happen. The spring I'm gonna run initially is gonna have like 245 pounds on the seat and about 605 open. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna put way too much spring on it. I'm gonna put a spring that's gonna have like 285, 295 pounds on the seat and like 800 open. So considerably more spring pressure than what it needs. Because through all those other tests, we'll see if the, how that spring's holding up. We're gonna do that, and we're gonna see how much power it loses or gains. And what's it do? Does it cause more valve float, less valve float? We're gonna find out. So I think that one's gonna be a cool one too. There's a bunch of other little stuff I've been thinking about as well. But the th thing is, is this is 12 tests, all right? And honestly, with this one, it's probably gonna make 13 or 14. So each one's gonna take about a month to do. Because remember, this isn't my, this is extra. 
this is not the job. My main job, of course, is supporting cylinder heads. So every time I spend with this, I'm not really making money. And you're like, no, nah, you know you make all this money from YouTube videos. If you're lucky, a good video will make 130 bucks. And that's over the course of a month. So you can think about four or five hours, I don't know. It's probably gonna be longer than that to do these videos. It's gonna make 130 bucks. I ain't making money. So I have to port heads to make money to do this. But anyway, um, this is gonna take uh, a year to accomplish. So it's gonna be tough to squeeze it all in, but just letting you know, that's the year's progress and we'll go from there. Now, what has to happen up until this point, there's still some pieces that I'm missing. The one is I wanna run shaft rockers and I'm like, well, that's not what we run though. Can't you do like stud mount? Cause that's what everybody else runs. I could. And honestly, I thought about one of the tests being, what's the difference in horsepower between a stud mount and a shaft mount? Um, but the reason for the stud mounts or the shaft mounts is because it's easier. Because remember, I'm going to be taking off this head several times. <sighs> a lot. So if you can get them both on the base circle, you can actually, this is my plan. If you get these two valves on the base circle, you can actually undo the shafts, pull them off without undoing the adjuster nut. So I don't have to redo the lash. Because on some of those tests, I won't have to change. The lash shouldn't change. The valve job should remain the same. It would save me time. That's what I'm trying to get at. So that's the biggest thing. Obviously, it can't happen on all the tests. Shaft mounts cost more, and I don't have them. The other thing is, right now, it's a long wait. I'm trying to get a set as quick as possible and see what can happen, but still, even the cheapest set I found is like $1,200. Um, it just adds up. But I may do that test anyway, just to share with you. But waiting for the shaft mounts, for sure, i got to figure out something with that. That's probably the longest wait on all the stuff I have right now. Still waiting for the rotating assembly to come in too. But the plan is at the end of November to have it up and running. Although I, to be quite honest with you, I'm betting some parts are gonna hold me back and that probably is not gonna happen. However, the quickest I can get it out, I will. Cause I wanna have a baseline at least done before the end of this year so that each month we can do this. Um, anyway, that's the thought. If there's something you would like to see, uh, just, put it in the comments and share it and we'll go from there. Because that, so far, all of that's pretty much the heads with small stuff here. After that, I plan to do just testing with the intake. So this one is not port matched. So we're gonna see how much port match makes a difference, how much actual porting makes a difference. Um, we're gonna lengthen the divider, shorten the dividers. I mean, we're gonna do a bunch of, just different things you guys wanna see. It's time intensive and I'm gonna share as much data as possible. I would say get the book at the end because then you have all the data and you can do whatever you want with it. Anyway, um, thanks for sticking around for this video. I know it got a little wrong and I really I gotta thank AFR for donating these. Urson for the cam, they've been a big help too and the lifters from BAM that they're helping me out with. Um, there's a lot of pieces that came together to help this come about and it's got a long way to go but without this, this would have taken even longer. So. This is going to be interesting. It's going to be a good time. Anyway, I better let you go so I can find some shaft rockers. You guys take care. Remember, I'm no Superman.